In this video, I will discuss case-based reasoning or case-based learning in machine learning with a simple example. Before we consider case-based reasoning or learning, first we will try to understand what are the different key properties of uh, instance-based methods such as uh, k-nearest neighbor and locally weighted regression algorithms. The first uh, key property is uh, these methods like uh, k-nearest neighbor and uh, locally weighted regression algorithms are lazy learning methods. That is, uh, unless and until we get a new query instance, uh, these methods uh, will will not do any learning. Uh, whenever we get a new instance, uh, we will use the training data and then this new instance will be classified based on uh, either the nearest neighbors or you can say that uh, locally weighted nearest neighbors in this case. Uh, I have discussed these two algorithms in detail in the previous videos. Uh, the link for those videos is given in the description below. Uh, there you will understand uh, how these particular algorithms will work and why the name given uh, like lazy learning or something like that. The second one is uh, they classify the new instance uh, by analyzing the similar instances. That is when it comes to k-nearest neighbor or locally weighted uh, regression algorithms, they consider only the nearest examples to classify the new instance. Uh, they will not consider all the instances which are present in the training data. They consider only the nearest instances. So that is the another uh, property of this uh, instance based methods here. The third one is uh, each and every data in this uh, kind of methods is represented as uh, real valued points in a n-dimensional Euclidean space. That is nothing but everything is a real valued in the form of table or something like that. Uh, that is the another uh, property of this particular instance based methods. Now coming back to this uh, case based reasoning or case based learning uh, methods. Uh, in this case, uh, we don't represent the uh, data uh, in the form of uh, real valued points uh, or something like that. What we do in this case is uh, we will use something called as a rich symbolic representations of uh, the cases you can say. And uh, the methods used to re retrieve similar instances are correspondingly more elaborate over here. So now uh, we will consider few examples to understand uh, how CBR will work. Uh, let us say that uh, we are trying to design a mechanical uh, device. So what we do here is uh, in this kind of CBR method or case based reasoning method, we store a previous design in the form of a library. Uh, whenever you want to design a new mechanical device, uh, we will go through those particular uh, previous designs and then uh, we will try to match uh, the previous designs with a new requirement. If any of those uh, previous design matches with a new requirement, uh, we will consider that particular design and then that will be given to the customer. Uh, if customer is happy with that particular design, yes, it's the final one. Otherwise, if the customer is not happy, what we need to do is uh, we need to do some modification and then that uh, thing should be given to the uh, customer over here. So that's how this particular CBR will work. Take another example. Let us say that you are trying to solve a legal case. So what we do in this case is uh, we will consider the previous uh, rulings as the cases. So we will match the new legal case with the previous uh, rulings. Uh, the one which will match with the previous ruling we will consider. If there is a slight modification is required, again we will do the modification and then we will apply that particular previous ruling to the new case so that uh, uh, there is a maximum possibility of winning that particular case or something like that. Now uh, we will try to understand what are the different steps uh, to be followed uh, in uh, case based reasoning uh, technique. The first step is uh, retrieve. Uh, given a new case we need to retrieve the similar cases uh, from the case base. Uh, we must be having some uh, library of cases. Uh, we need to match this particular uh, library of cases with a new case. The one which is more similar we need to retrieve it. That's the first step. Once you retrieve that particular thing uh, we need to check whether that particular uh, solution is uh, uh, exactly same or there is a need of some modification uh, with respect to new case. If it is exactly same, there is no need of uh, any modification. If uh, it is not exactly same, we need to do some modification so that it will uh, fit to the new case over here. So that's the second uh, step in this case. The third thing is uh, once you apply that particular existing case with 
to the new case we need to evaluate that particular solution whether it is working fine or not if it is working fine then it's okay if it is not working fine uh, again uh, we need to do some modification to that uh, existing case uh, so that it will work perfectly fine on the new case over here uh, the fourth one is very interesting uh, if you have not done any modification uh, the fourth step will not come into picture because you already the case is uh, present in the case base so there is no need to retain it or uh, store it again but if you have done some modification to that uh, case, whatever you have extracted uh, from the uh, case base, uh, we need to make a decision whether to retain that particular new case uh, in the case base or we should not retain it. So that is a decision we have to make. But here we can make a decision based on uh, whether we have done some modification or whether we have not done modification to the existing case. If you have not done any modification, there is no point in uh, storing the new case here. If you have done some modification, definitely you have to store the new case into the case base over here. Again, we will take one more example to understand this one. Uh, let us say that uh, there is a help desk uh, where the customers will call uh, to get some solution to their problems. Okay, so what actually happens is uh, whenever they call, they will give the description of that particular problem. So what the help desk uh, person will do is uh, they will search for the closest case what they have solved or what they have suggested to the customers. Once they get that particular closest case, uh, they will recommend that particular closest case to the uh, user. For example, let us say that uh, the person will call uh, to the help desk and they say that uh, the internet is wo not working in my uh, mobile. So whenever uh, this description is given to the help desk person, uh, they will search the closest case uh, to that particular description and then they will recommend the solution. So uh, it may happen that uh, uh, the solution may work or it may not work. Uh, if it works, it's fine. If it doesn't work, uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to give some other solutions and so on. So that's how actually the thing will go on, go on over here. Uh, if the existing uh, the uh, solution is working, there is no point in storing it into the uh, case base. If it is not working and if you have suggested some new solution, you can store that particular thing into your case base and so on. So that's a very simple uh, idea behind this particular case based uh, uh, reasoning uh, algorithm over here. Now, one more example we will try to take uh, so that we can get a clear picture of uh, case based re reasoning here. Let us say that uh, uh, we are trying to design a mechanical device such as uh, water faucets. Uh, what we can do here is uh, we can uh, create some uh, designs. Let us say that uh, 75 designs uh, were uh, stored into the database. Uh, the de uh, the, they, they look something like this one. Uh, they will have two things one is structure and another one is function the structure of that particular faucet and uh, what is the functionality of that particular faucet over here so it is a t junction pipe where uh, q1 q represents the water flow and t represents the temperature here so water is flowing in this direction and it is flowing in this direction so the functionality over here is q3 is equal to what q1 uh, q2 so because both are coming in this direction only so q3 is equal to q1 plus q2 T3 is equal to T1 plus T2 and so on. So this is how what we do is uh, we will store the previous designs. Whenever a customer comes to us and then uh, they will give the problem description or what they are expecting in uh, water faucets or something like that. Uh, we will uh, uh, retrieve one of this particular design uh, based on his uh, description and then that will be given to the customer the customer may be uh, satisfied with that particular solution he may not be satisfied. If he is satisfied with the given solution, yes, that's the final one because already available, we have presented the same solution to the customer. If he is not satisfied, we need to do some modification to that particular design and then we need to present it to the customer over there. So because you have done some modification, you can store that particular new design and it will become the 76th design and so on. So that is how actually the case based reasoning works in this case. So in this video, I have discussed how to apply uh, case based reasoning uh, in the machine learning with the simple uh, examples. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.